miss a minute. Listen at your leisure, always online and on demand at RadioMD.com. You, the Owner's Manual Radio Show. Guest time on You, the Owner's Manual Radio Show. How do some people make good things happen and bounce back from setbacks? Why do they lead Why do they lead happier, healthier, more productive lives? Uh, It's because they have hope, not because of luck or uh, smarts or money. So what exactly is hope and how can you get it too? Well, you're going to find out here in this segment. Dr. Shane Lopez is the world's leading researcher on hope. His mission is to teach people that investing in their future pays off today. Dr. Lopez, also one of the most vocal advocates of the psychological reform of America's education system. And his book is called Making Hope Happen. Create the Future You Want for Yourself and Others. Pick it up and read it. Published by Atria Books. It's a division of Simon & Schuster. Well, uh, Doc, thanks for coming on today and uh, talk about your book and hope. And I I wonder how much hope uh, could you use to win a Powerball jackpot of uh, $575 million? Hope hope won't help you at all. Not at all? uh, With things like that, you know. Um, Well, well, wait, wait, wait. I've got to interrupt (laughs) <laughs> I got to interrupt here. Wait a second. It, you, if you didn't have hope, you wouldn't buy the ticket. You're probably so, right so, about that. But I, I think some people are wishing, Doctor Mike. I think they wish so hard, and and they think they're hope. Yeah, probably more luck than hope. Obviously, here's Doctor Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. And, and there is a wonderful website associated with this book, and it's called uh, hopemonger.com. You can actually take a test there, which is the test on uh, how you have. I, it's a test, I assume, from the book. It's the same, um, yep. which tells you how much hope um, you have in your life. And then there are obviously things in this book, which is called Making Hope Happen, um, that teach you how to do better. One of the things you you stress in the book is stories matter. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you mean by that. Yeah, whether it's an age-old story like Odysseus or or the story of the most hopeful person in your family, you know, we we like to model ourselves after heroes, and and heroes are are high-hope creatures. And I believe the more we can kind of encapsulate the, the hopeful events in our own lives through stories, um, the more those stories actually give us hope, you know, time and time again, every time we tell the story. But also, um, the stories can uh, create a contagion of hope. So my story of hope can inspire someone else's who can inspire someone else's hope. And now it's kind of a wonderful time of year for that with all of these graduates running around America from high school and college. You're hearing just these amazing stories of people overcoming obstacles and, and accomplishing their goals and, and really building hope in their own lives. Well, in fact, we're here at my wife's, um, re- one of her college reunions, mm-hmm. um, and one of the things she was saying was, um, you know, people were saying, well, it's a tough time because it's tough to get graduates' jobs, and she said, well, you know, in my era when we graduated, and this tells you how old we are, um, the Vietnam era was going on, and people Ooh. were very unhopeful, and half of her class, in fact, walked out from graduation and it was because of this process mm-hmm. so um, we can always look at more um, hopeful times one of the things I loved about the book because you say well what does this have to do with medical care etc and um, one of the questions you ask on this website and in the book is why your doctor should examine your hope tell me yeah. what you mean by that question and what it means yeah, what we found again and again is that hope triggers happiness and happiness triggers health. Um, so whether we look at it in America or any country in the world, um, through the Gallup World Poll, we found that hope and happiness are linked and happiness and, and health are linked. So I really think just like doctors like yourself ask people about stress, anxiety, depression, fear in their lives, you know, if we could get physicians to start really caring in a deep, meaningful way about hope and happiness, I believe that they'll uncover some hidden resources in a patient's life that can really, you know, propel them forward and get them behaving in their best interest. Because that's what hope does. When you're hopeful about the future, you behave in your best interest today. You exercise more, you eat better, you smoke less, you do the healthy things that your doctor already wants you to do. To what degree do you think the lack of hope 
is playing in what we call our obesity crisis? Yeah, that's that a is, great question. Are people, are people letting themselves go, not exercising, eating the wrong foods, um, doing other things that increase their um, risk of chronic disease mm -hmm. because they don't have hope for the future? I, I would say yes, and, and, you know, a lot of times when I'm working with medical patients, I'll, I'll start off in a whimsical way. I, I'll ask them, have you ever washed a rental car? And they'll look at me kind of curious. It's like, why are we talking about rental cars? And then they'll finally answer, no, I've never washed a rental car. I said, we don't work on goals we don't own. We don't take care of a rental car that, that we don't own. And right now you're not owning your health. You're not really taking care of yourself as if this health is something – that belongs to you. You've kind of externalized the responsibility for it. So I try to jumpstart hope in people's lives by getting them to get that old feeling back, you know, how you just get them to, to create a little bit of excitement in their lives, a little bit of energy, and then they tap into that feeling again, and they realize, okay, maybe I can do this again tomorrow. Maybe I can do this the next day. But I think folks who are, are, are mired in sadness, depression, maybe loneliness, um, are in a very low hope place, and then um, they they stop taking care of themselves, as you well know. Well, this is an interesting. I, I this is a email from John, who mm. lives just outside Cleveland, and it's a very interesting email. Anyone can email us a question at udocs y o u d o c s at gmail dot com, and I did not expect this email. This is an email is from John. He says, my wife and I both smoke and don't feel like we're going to quit because we cannot save enough money for retirement, so it's just as well we die early. Wow. Tell me how to get hope when I'm not going to be able to live past 65. Wow. Or, now I that, suppose I mean, support he's, myself. Yeah, he's psychologically boxed in. I mean, he is, he is defined his future in, in such a way that, you know, his present doesn't really matter. And, and, and that's, gosh, that's a scary, scary place to be for folks and, and for that emailer and, and folks around the country who are in that spot right now. I mean, they need to do one thing. And, and, and I would say this is hard but easy at the same time. You have to find the most hopeful person in your life. You have to find someone that you've always looked up to to kind of think themselves out of problems and out of binds, and, and you've always marveled at, hey, how did he figure this out? And he's going to have to spend some time with that hopeful person talking about this exact dilemma. You know, the challenge is he hasn't saved enough for retirement, so now he thinks, why well, take care of myself, you know, if, if I haven't saved enough? And his wife is thinking the same way. So somehow, some way, they have to break themselves out of that way of thinking. The reality may not change regarding the financial situation, but there are lots of ways to live a, a healthy, productive life on less money than you think. We, we find that around the world. So somehow he's got to find the most hopeful person in his life and talk to that person about exactly what he just emailed about. Um, I guess that's true. I mean, and, and you'd say, well, I, I guess in, our, in Joe's early thing, did you buy a lottery ticket? If you bought a lottery ticket, then you may have some hope for the future. Um, in, but it is to find. So what you use in the book is role models, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of stories here that are very powerful of mod of people who have done things for or, or had role models uh, of hope and gotten mm -hmm. hope in their own in their own life because of that. Mm -hmm. And also some folks who offered some intrusive support at just the right time. So sometimes instrumental support, a helping hand, is not enough. Sometimes we need to let friends know that, hey, I'm working on something important to try to change my life. When I go off track, you have permission to come kick me in the butt and get me back on track. And that intrusive support can be so important to really make us own our, our important goal. Let's spend a little more time with Dr. Shane Lopez right after the break. He's a Gallup senior scientist, and he's the world's leading authority on the psychology of hope. His book is called Making Hope Happen. Create the future you want for yourself and others. It's published by Atria Books, Division of Simon & Schuster. This is You, the Owner's Manual Radio Show with Dr. Mike Roizen right here on Radio MD. Stay well. <laughs> 